Happy Monday, everyone. Oh, come on, say happy Monday back. Happy Monday. I know Mondays are always the toughest, but I'm so excited um, to have this community meeting. Um, this has been a long time coming, um, and many of you here um, were really instrumental along the way in giving feedback into um, how do we make strategic investments in the Alts Mason McCart area um, to ensure that it's a vibrant, thriving corridor for us, our families, and our neighbors. So um, thank you all so much for being here. I'm going to take a little bit of liberty and just um, acknowledge a few dignitaries who are here who are doing amazing work in our community. Um, Trustee Ann Dart, thank you uh, for opening up your uh, district and your uh, school here with South Hills High School, and thank you for your work. Um, I also saw uh, Roderick Miles, who is a, uh, the um, executive administrator for Commissioner Roy Brooks. Thank you for being here, sir. Um, I also want to thank um, our staff um, for all of the hard work that you do day in and day out to serve our city and our residents. Um, it certainly doesn't go unnoticed by me, and I am extremely grateful for all that y'all do. So let's give a round warm of applause for our staff. Um, I have a, a few notes because this news and all the things that we've been working on is so exciting that I don't want to leave anything out, so bear with me a little bit. Um, I, I first want to say that, um, you know, we've worked alongside um, residents and city staff around this topic of what does it look like to um, have a vibrant corridor in the Alta Mesa Macar area. Um, and that input was given by residents, um, by city staff, um, and it's helped us um, get to this point. Um, over the past 17 months, um, we've worked really diligently, um, not only to receive that input, um, but also to coordinate with staff um, to develop a plan um, to improve our commercial corridors and the public spaces and places um, that connect that corridor. Um, this has led us to develop um, what we're calling uh, the Clean, Safe, and Green Plan. Um, and each one of those items, clean, safe, and green, um, are tied to strategic goals that ultimately help us um, address some uh, root issues and root opportunities um, to revitalize our corridor. Um, I think what's most important is to note how do we do that, um, and it's through two ways. Um, one is leveraging the current city services that are already funded in our general fund um, to ensure that we're delivering services in a coordinated effort through an interdepartmental coordination um, strategically designed to address and move forward the, the plan of clean, safe, and green in our corridors. Um, and then the second thing is, in addition to maximizing the city services and the way that we deliver them to this corridor, um, it's also important that we explore economic development tools that are available for us um, that help us to generate additional um, resources to make strategic investments to deliver additional services that are needed ultimately to achieve that plan. Um, and that's what we'll be presenting to you today. Um, Chief Aldridge um, is going to be here to kind of talk about um, our Safe Community Initiative um, and how our departments are working together in an interdepartmental um, coordination um, in partnership with you all as the residents of District 6 and of Fort Worth. Um, and that, that work is extremely critical to this plan. And secondly, um, uh, Crystal Hinosa and Vicki Moss, um, who are with our economic development team, will walk us through um, two important economic development tools that we could potentially use with community feedback um, that would allow us to have additional resources um, to invest in ways strategically and informed by our neighborhoods and our residents in this corridor. So uh, without any further ado, um, I do want to introduce um, Chief Aldridge. Um, before I do, I just want to say that um, this conversation is a continued conversation of the many conversations we've had, um, whether it was formally uh, um, related to the uh, revitalization work or whether it was through neighborhood meetings of us in the community. Um, and I think that this conversation is uh, one of many. And so if you're really interested by the end of this presentation, um, we do have some next steps for you. One of being, um, if you're interested in being a part of our working group, um, to discuss how do we execute this plan and how do we make this plan better. Um, we, we have a sign up. My uh, district director, Davia Johnson, is here um, and she has a sign up um, that is on the paper. So please sign up after we conclude this presentation. Um, and for our folks online, you can email our office at district6 at fortworthtexas.gov if you're interested in joining on when you see this video later. Um, without any further ado, uh, Chief Aldridge, uh, come on up. Thank you for being here, man. Appreciate it. 
Thank you for being here. Um, I know it takes a lot to take away from your family, your nightly events, to, to carve out a little bit of time to be with us, but you're going to find out it's really important that you're here. So Chief Noakes, whenever he first took over, one of his uh, poignant things that he always says is, we can't arrest our way out of a problem. That is so vitally true. So crime prevention is everybody's you know, responsibility, whether you're a citizen, whether it's code, parks, library, any other departmental uh, group that's within our city. So earlier this year, we, we started the Fort Worth Safe Initiative. Fort Worth Safe Initiative, um, it, it's a violent crime strategy that we've kind of incorporated throughout the city to address our violent crime. Now last year, uh, we kind of had a very similar initiative, but whenever we looked at violent crime, we looked at it, if you looked at a weather map, a weather map kind of encompassed a large geographical area, and they were called hotspot maps. Now, although they're really good to put some resources in those areas, the problem was is that it was kind of a very broad net. And so this year, we looked at it, and we said, you know, that, that's just, it's too big. It's too large. We need to pare down that information and basically give our officers some better tools and, and hit areas that we think are really kind of eating us up with the violent crime. So we kind of broke everything down into PRAs. They're, they're called police reporting areas, PRAs. Um, and we were able to basically identify 24 PRAs that had the majority of our violent crime across the city. And so with that, the PRAs are very, very small in nature. So um, we have about a little over 800 PRAs. Put that into perspective, we only have 93 patrol beats within our city. So there are multiple PRAs in every one of the beats. So whenever we dug it down really, you know, close, we're able to pinpoint where, what PRAs are actually ca causing us the biggest problems. Um, and each month as we went on, this initiative started April 2nd, every month we had run another report because we know that those PRA maps would basically change and morph whenever, the crime, whenever we started addressing crime. So coincidentally, during this whole time, uh, David Cook, the city manager, he kind of tasked us. He said, listen, crime prevention is everybody's issue. This isn't just a police issue. Um, we're not expecting the police to solve this by themselves. And he goes, I want you guys to put together the entire, every department within the, the city to start working on this. And that's how the interdepartmental working group kind of formed. So during the summer, we started having meetings. And so part of those meetings were we talked about violent crime. We talked about what did it look like if code compliance did certain things, if parks did things, if the library kind of pitched in. And then from that, we kind of started looking at the maps, the crime maps, because for us, it's really important that, we, again, we put the resources where we want the biggest bang for our buck. So if you look at this map, this is just kind of a small section. This is what a PRA map looks like. And so this is just South Division. I didn't put on the entire city because really we're talking about Alta Mesa McCard area. And so whenever we looked at it, you can see quite a few areas are highlighted. The darker the color, the, the further you get away from green, the more uh, propensity for violent crime there is. And so, you know, from that, we started looking really closely to go, how can we have the biggest impact? We know that you guys have been asking for help, asking for services, and asking for us to make a, a safe place for you guys to, you know, live, work, and play. I can tell you, Councilman Williams, he wants to make sure that the investments that go into this area are good investments, not just throwing businesses in here because they want to open up a business. He wants to make sure that business fits within this area and it, it fits with the values of the community. So from that, we basically, we narrowed it down to these three PRAs. And if you look on the western edge, of course, it's McCart, goes up from Walton all the way down to Steamboat. Now, although those are, of course, pretty hard boundaries, we're not bound specifically by those hard boundaries, but those were some of the highest incidents of violent crime in the South Division that we think we could have some really good impact. Now, we know from the police department some of the, you know, uh, some of the things that we can do to help impact this crime. We have community cameras. We got community cameras across the city. Those have been very effective, not only solving crime, but preventing crime. Um, we got Billy Rudd, who's our crime prevention specialist. Many of you guys know him. He is very active out there. And our whole goal is prevention. We can be very reactive. We're always reactive on all the calls that we get. But if we can actually prevent some of this stuff from happening, I think overall we're going to be better. Now, this doesn't mean that departments haven't been working in Alta Mesa and McCart. We've been working in the areas independently for quite some time. Code's been doing their thing. Parks has been doing theirs. TPNW. This is more of a concentrated effort. We've actually, you know, we've formulated an actual group 
we formalized that process to have everybody in the room to become accountable to one another, going, if these are our issues, then this is what we need to start addressing. This is where you come in. This is why we're here. Because I can tell you what I think is a great plan. You guys live here. You guys know what the issues are. We don't know every issue that's going on because you guys are here 24-7. So that's where I need your help. Let us know what you think needs to be fixed. Let us know what you think needs to be improved upon. If it's a park that needs to be cleaned, if it's street lights that either need to be put in or repaired, if it's code compliance with code issues, if it's TPNW for uh, you know, street calming measures, if it's the library to put on some more educational you know, activities, we need to know. Um, because although what I think is a good fit for you, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a good fit for you. Um, because this is your community. That is the whole reason for this event, is for you guys to be able to speak up and tell us what you think is important. So I just thought it was important to kind of give you an overview of where we were, kind of how we got here, and what we're going to do moving forward, because what we're going to do is take your feedback, and we're going to basically sit back, digest it, and see what steps we need to take moving forward to try and implement some of those issues that you brought to us. So from that, I'll pass it over to Crystal, and she can take over from there. Hi everyone, I'm Crystal Inahosa, and um, like Councilmember Williams said, I'm going to talk to you tonight about TIFs and PIDs and how those economic development tools could potentially revitalize the corridor of Altamesa McCart. And so, first I want to tell you about the purpose of revitalization in the corridor and the efforts. And those are to target the Altamesa and McCart area for redevelopment projects and infrastructure improvements to uh, better utilize existing assets and con cr connect the area with major employment nodes such as the emerges emerging Chisholm Trail Parkway Corridor and the large industrial district along Interstate 35. Also to support new and existing business, to spur community support for additional and diverse commercial, retail, and service-oriented development, that, as well as improve the existing public spaces. We would also want to create momentum that spurs private investment, catalytic development, and additional community-based economic development that would, will result in a self-sustaining, resilient area. Also to implement the safe, green, and clean goals that Councilmember Williams had just spoken about. Let's see. And so first, I want to tell you what a TIF or a TERS is, and when it which stands for Tax Increment Financing District. And when a TIF is established, it freezes the tax value on the property in its current state. That's called the TIF's base value. As the area sees more investment and new development that causes the area's value to rise, that increment or the tax revenue generated by the difference between the TIF's new value and its original base is set aside to fund public improvements within the district. So some pot potential TIF goes. Uh, for the corridor would be re redevelopment within a TIF district consisting of a co combination of a public improvements and private investment projects. These will provide a foundation of development and encourage support long term for long term public needs of neighborhoods and secure mixed use economic growth opportunities. Some broad goals that TIFs serve are to increase the tax base, increase retail and commercial business and create new employment opportunities. Public infrastructure would be roads, sidewalks, stormwater drainage, sewers, streetscapes, all associated with mixed use development. And some potential projects and improvements would be corridor improvements, specific to street traffic drainage, utility, and other public infrastructure improvements, uh, associated with renovation of retail strips, district-wide improvements to enhance connectivity, such as sidewalks, bicycles, and trails, and then gateway enhancements. Some tax increment financing basics. TIFs are authorized by Chapter 311 of the Texas Tax Code. Um, the city establishes a TIF according to those guidelines. Other taxing entities may elect to participate in a TIF by approving a partici participation agreement, which this agreement sets forth the percentage of, of tax increment that taxing entity is willing to dedicate to the TIF fund. And so establishment of a TIF is subject to some limitations, such as the district not having more than 10% of residential. As a result, as I said, they're primarily oriented to serve infrastructure improvements, uh, generally put towards uh, projects like construction of roads, utilities, environmental remediation, demolition of, ex of existing structures, and historic preservation and rehabilitation. 
The duration of a TIF is set typically for 20 years. It's governed by a board composed of members appointed by the participating tax jurisdictions, including the city, and the re board reviews and approves all policies and projects for the TIF fund for that particular district. Properties that are exempt from local property taxes do not contribute tax uh, increment into a TIF. So what is a PID? Public Improvement Districts. They are authorized by Chapter 372 of Texas Local Government Code. And the way these are created is that property owners when they, within a defined boundary who agree to levy an assessment, basically a fee applied to their property value across the district in order to provide public improvements and maintenance within a district. So a PID can fund things, uh, can provide funding for supplemental services and improvements that meet the needs of the community, but could not, could not otherwise be constructed or provided. That those are things such as security, maintenance and beautification of common areas, promotion of the district, and economic development initiatives. To create a PID, property owners must petition to sit the city and to qualify, uh, the petition must be signed by owners of taxable real property representing more than 50% of appraised value and record owners of property who constitute more than 50% of all record owners or who own taxable real property that constitutes more than 50% of the area. Councilmember Williams said, potential PID goals, they're clean, safe, and green, and so clean being to ensure cleanliness, litter cleanup and installation of public waste, can, waste cans, public murals and other public art, enhance code enforcement, safe being to improve safety, installation of light and lighting and security cameras, additional police presence, off-duty patrols, improvements to enhance pedestrian, bike, and bus shelter safety, and green being to improve park connectivity and maintenance. Those are things such as establishing, establishing a trail of systems connecting community centers and parks within the corridor, as well as tree planting and beautification in parks, medians, and streetscapes. And as we said, benefits of a PID, um, they help stab stabilize commercial and residential districts to promote business growth along the corridors. Some specific examples we have in other PIDs across the city marketing the district's defining assets, communicating unique fe features through storytelling, and supporting a buy local experience. We see that with Camp Bowie PID. They uh, utilize PID funds to market their shop small Saturday events. We also have uh, other PIDs utilizing resources for the district's safety and security. We see that with Las Vegas Trail. They are supplementing service to provide Fort Worth police off-duty patrols in their corridors. And I just want to mention that five other PIDs in the city of Fort Worth utilize funds to have um, additional police presence in the corridor. And so with the next steps, we said that we're going to host future community meetings to share information and gain feedback on establishing a PID for Alta Mesa McCart Corridor and to identify a, a committee of working group or a working group to facilitate the establishment of the PID. And with that, I'll give it to you. Council Member, do you have any closing remarks? I am here uh, to field any questions you have regarding TIFs and PIDs. I'll be at the Quality of Life Station. Absolutely. Thank you, Crystal and Chief Aldrich. Really appreciate y'all. Let's give them a round of applause, please. Um, so um, we have city departments here um, that are available for questions. I'll also be here for questions. We thought it'd be much more interactive and engaging if we have you ask specific questions around um, the current city services and also this plan. And so I'm available as well as um, all of city staff. Um, for those of you who are watching online, um, we would love to hear your feedback as well. Um, and we'll be sure to make sure that um, on our posting of this video and also in the video that you will have instructions on how to give your feedback. Um, we look forward to hearing from you all, um, and thank you all again for presenting or being here today. Um, and we look forward to uh, discussing uh, this plan and, and your hopes for um, improved services in this area. So thank you all again, and we look forward to talking to you all. Take care.